Once the desire arises, we become a slave to them. It's just that we say, oh, these are my desires. How are these your desires when you never desired them? Do we desire our desires? No, they just come. And where do they come from? They come from influences, they come from conditioning, and they arise from the bodily configuration. And once they arise, we act as if we own them. We say, oh, this is my desire. And then we run after those desires. And thousand others are running after the same desires. And if we succeed in the competition, we say we are special. No, we are not. Can you question desire itself? And when you question desire itself, then you learn the right desire. And that's where joy is. That's where the highest pleasure is. Namaste Acharya ji. Uh, I am a graduate from the year 2011, uh, B.Tech and M.Tech from Biochemical Engineering. Uh, I, <clears throat> my question is actually an extension of what you were saying earlier in the conversation. Perhaps I did not understand it completely, which is why I'm asking my question. Uh, when you were talking about how our current systems are a whitewashed extension of what already exists in the jungle, my question is if the animalistic nature is so innate natural and core to the human experience is your view that one needs to embrace it and perhaps enhance it in one's everyday life or that one needs to be able to tame it harness it mold it in a way that makes us you know human and different from animals lovely question ruchara and great that you asked it because i myself felt that probably the discussion was uh, not uh, complete at that moment. You see, this is really the only spiritual question possible. What to do with Prakriti? Hmm? That which you are calling as one's innate nature. Uh, classically, we just call it as Prakriti. Prakriti exists both outside us in the form of the uh, jungle we refer to and it exists in our person as well. Hmm? This body and all its systems, they too are prakritic, right? Now, that's the question. What to do with it? You can't live without it and you can't live with it as it is. Hmm? So, who are you? That's classically called as the Purush. Purush refers to consciousness. And what is everything that you can perceive, experience, see, talk of, think of, mentate, that is called as Prakriti. Whatever you can lay your hands on, whatever your eyes can look at, that is called as Prakriti. Whatever you can even imagine or think of, that is Prakriti. So you are the subject, the Purush, and all your objects are called as Prakriti. And indeed, the aim of all philosophical systems and all spiritual inquiry is to determine the right relationship between Purush and Prakriti. And so that's what you have asked. Do we tame it? Do we ignore it? Do we transcend it? What do we do? It's a very delicate thing, this relationship. You have to come very close to it. You have to understand it. But you have to avoid getting engaged. And that is, again, classically called as witnessing. You cannot run away from it just as you cannot run away from your own body. That's a privilege not given to us. Can one run away from the body? No. Is there consciousness without body? Well, no. Absolute consciousness, it is said that it's uh, uh, metaphysical, not corporal. But we are not creatures of absolute consciousness, no? We are creatures of dualistic consciousness and our personal consciousness depends totally on the body. If you sleep, the state of your consciousness changes. If you get drunk, your consciousness again changes. So can there be our personal consciousness without the body? Well, no. So then what can... Purush do it cannot run away from Prakriti, just as our consciousness is always wedded to Prakriti, which is the body. Hmm? You cannot run away from it. Can you fight it? Well, that method has been tried. 
a lot of people have tried that method they said we'll do exactly the opposite of what prakriti says then prakriti laughs at them hmm? and that's the reason prakriti is also called as maya hmm? prakriti laughs at them says will you stop breathing can you stop breathing now breathing too is an animalistic thing it was happening in the jungle it is happening in the cities as well can you stop breathing you cannot stop breathing can you stop looking perceiving can you stop getting attracted can you stop the force of inquiry and curiosity that arises in a child's mind you cannot stop all these things so you cannot fight me you cannot run away from me you cannot fight me so what is the relationship that i that you need to have with me india came up with a beautiful answer india said worship her worship her but do not try to own her worship her from a reverent distance so india then started calling the jungle as ma this entire uh, system of mother worship hmm? the 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 shakt stream hmm? where you have devi puja and such things is nothing but an answer to the question of right relationship hmm? durga or ambika or kali they represent prakriti what to do with them worship them worship them as mother be close to them without the without the intention to possess them or exploit them so go close to the jungle observe it know it have reverence towards it but do not aim to own it possess it exploit it or consume it that's the right relationship and when that right relationship is there then somehow magically prakriti herself comes to redeem you liberate you so india said that liberation will not happen if you run away from her it's not possible because wherever you go you will be still within her domain there is no point in space away from her all space her is her own extension all time is her own continuation so thinking of uh, uh, somehow uh, escaping or eloping or whatever is just impossible you are her own product in the corporeal sense how will you run away so come close come close but do not come close as the ordinary consumer does you know when we ordinarily come close to something we want to lay our dirty hands on that thing no and we want to pick that thing up and consume it and ingratiate us and and feel the pleasure india said no that's not the way go close go close with the spirit to really know go close without the intention to exploit and that is called love love involves intimacy without the intention to exploit so know her know her know life know every aspect of life do not uh, shy away do not run away be fully immersed but being immersed is just not the same as being exploitative being immersed is not the same as being inebriated no know it without falling prey to it neither should you fall prey to it nor should you allow that thing to own you and possess you and that's the reason why there is so much emphasis then on on renunciation renunciation therefore is uh, not about giving up renunciation is about not acquiring what is anyway not yours and if somehow mistakenly you have picked it up then respectfully just keep it back <laughs> it is not yours why do you want to act like a thief do you see how all these things are interlinked so that's the most fundamental question the kid is born the kid is born as the body but remaining the body the kid never feels satisfied and that's why the human being is the most restless among all species 
we are endowed with a special quality of consciousness that is not content with its prakritic hmm, animalistic existence no animal ever feels the kind of existential restlessness that we do so what to do then how to live that's the question all spirituality wants to address who are you why are you born what to do with this life what kind of relationship to have with this world the right relationship is a thing of uh, of deep uh, sadhana you have to master it uh, because if you go close to her there is the risk of getting sucked in uh, no you have to go close you have to go close to observe to know and that is what is called as worship worship is not just about bowing your head in the physical sense worship is about going close just as there is a deity in the temple no you go close to the deity you go close to the deity and then you bow your head down what does that mean that means i am coming close to you without letting my head dominate what i will do in the moment of closeness so i'll come close to you but just because i'm coming close to you i'll not start for example the deity might be decked with a lot of gold in india that often is the case no there is a lot of gold on the deity now you can go to the deity and look at the gold and say oh i'll take all this away that's not what you do you go to the deity and you bow your head down that's what you are to do with this life with everything that is there in physical existence be it the jungle be it the animals be it the natural resources be it the opposite gender or be it your own body hmm? live a life of uh, of deep immersion without uh, but you know now i'm going into the preachy aspects of it <laughs> hope i have answered